Hey, it's been a while. Um, I'm doing good. Uh, I'm just coming here because the hour's late and there's plenty of things going on in the world. Um, and I know personally, I've been going through a lot of spiritual attacks um, to a level that is beyond what I've ever experienced. Um, and it's been going on for about maybe a week and a half now a higher ramp up than I thought it could get ramped up. And, you know, it's fine. Um, I praise the Lord through it all. Um, I was praying about it, and, you know, I surrendered. I tried to surrender everything to the Lord, even prayer requests. I surrendered to Him. Um, I was talking if you wanted me to ask and make a video about prayer requests. And He didn't say anything for a while. And uh, just recently, He gave me the go to do so. And so here I am asking, um, uh, there are spiritual attacks in my sleep when I'm awake, um, and both God also, you know, I, I pray a lot all the time, protection, um, whatever he wants me to pray. Um, and he showed me cause he was, he was allowing these things and I was like, okay, Lord, I know you're allowing this and that's fine. You know, I'm not angry at you at all. I just want to know why. And he showed me, he reminded me, Job, and uh, he reminded me that we're all going through our own refinement. And this is like the final finale of refinement. Um, he reminded me of a previous word about him putting me through a rigorous fire, and this is a part of it. And I was like, okay, I understand. <clears throat> so that's <laughs> what I'm going through. And this is why I'm here. I know a lot of people are going through it right now. Um, and what he did show me, put in my spirit, is that there's something huge coming out of this. Very huge, like a huge blessing, glorious blessing. Not just for me, but all who else are going through a higher ramp up of spiritual attacks. It's, it's such a great outpouring of his love and blessing already waiting for us. That That's why it's so intense right now. Um, I'm praying for you guys too, because, you know, we take comfort knowing that we're not doing this alone and we're not, um, we're all in this together and we're right there. Um, I feel a great urgency about this year, great urgency. I didn't feel it as much last year, but this year, my goodness, it's a urgency. God has been showing me a lot of things about, um, in Mark, it talks about, you know, the sun will be darkened and the moon will give us light. Well, he showed me that in Mark about last week and I was doing some research on it. And, you know, the, the solar eclipse that's happening in March, it's going to be no moon. So the sun's going to be darkened and the moon will give us light because it's going to be a new moon um, that day. So there's like prophecies right there being fulfilled. Um, it also talks about in that scripture, and the blood would turn, the moon would turn red as blood, um, and that happens right after in April with Passover. So, and there's something with that. I don't know what, but he's been pointing me to scripture, taking me to um, his death in scripture multiple times. Like, he took me to the death of the scripture in John. I mean, in Luke, Matthew, and Mark repeatedly keeps he keeps taking me there keeps taking me there and uh, recently today he's adding on to it why showing me in exodus 21 where he talks about um the year of release uh, of the slaves and i know about the smita i know about that and he also enlightened me that this is a this is the year of release 2015 is the year of release um but it's not just a year of release, it's a jubilee year on top of a year of release. And that jubilee year is a very special year, very special. Um, something to do with the trumpet's blast or something like that. So it's very interesting. And um, there's, there's so much coming. Um, I know that this year is gonna be a lot of prophecies fulfilled. I feel really heavy in my heart that the shaking is going to be very soon, very soon, 
within days and months. Um, we're going to start seeing things domino effect quick. Um, it's not going to be easy for us to see it because we are going to see some things. It's not going to be a cakewalk. We're going to we're not going to be harmed. We're going to be just fine, but we will witness things we don't expect. Um, we will see a lot of death. We will see destruction. We're going to see it. Um, but this is the beginning of sorrows. Just think about when the sorrows are fully happening. That's the tribulation. That's it's going to be a horrible time. So I don't know. I'm just kind of winging this. I feel like now is the time to just really seek the Lord a lot because these times we're coming in are going to be so intense as far as faith. Our faith is going to be tested. Um, not tested in a way like, oh, you're not good enough, but just he tests us because we know we can do it. He knows we can do it. He made us to be able to do it. But he wants us to see how great he knows we are. That's a part of the testing. That's a part of the fire. That's part of the, the spiritual attacks to see greater of what he made you. And he's teaching me that. I'm seeing myself stronger than I ever was through him, not in my own power. I just feel that I need to store food. <laughs> I've stored a lot of water, but I'm feeling that in my spirit to store rice. I don't know if it's for me. He hasn't told me if, if it's for me yet, but he's he's hinted that I won't be in my home, but I don't know at what point. I don't know if I'm moving, if we're being transported and this is just a safe haven, or if I'm staying here for like, as far as the beginning of sorrows before, you know, the, the escape happens um, and the transfiguration, the transformation, the glorification, all that. I don't know, but I know that he spoke to me about this and showed me that this this home, this I am, and it's going to be something used later. It's going to be preserved for something. And I know that other people can confirm this. Um, some houses will, some houses won't. It just depends on location. God is, is a very tactical and perfect, accurate God. So, um, but yeah, storing rice is a big thing in my, my spirit right now. I need to do that. Um, anything else I need to say? No, that's it. You know, uh, I'm praying for you guys and um, I'm just being obedient to the Lord and, you know, asking for prayer requests just to be strong and endure um, and to keep my eyes focused on the prize because it's intense. Even when I sleep, um, I just feel like I get sleep. Uh, let's say, for example, yesterday I was off of work. Um, I went through spiritual texts pretty much all day. When I get to sleep, um, one example, they I can God has greatly heightened my discernment to where I can see and feel where any evil spirit, either in my heart, in my mind, I can feel it. I can just my, I can feel it. He's giving me great discernment. Um, to where I can feel it on people, I can feel the spirit of fear on somebody. Um, I can feel depression. Like he's he's opened me up greatly. It's, all in his grace, all in his grace, because I don't deserve it, all in his grace. And from that, I thank him. And a lot of times when I'm about to go to sleep, I can feel them because they'll, they'll just, <laughs> they're, they're vipers and they're vipers and snakes, but they're very strategic as to where they'll place themselves in your room. And this is maybe something new you don't know. They'll place themselves in the room not right up on you, but at a distance. And when they're at a distance, they're very sneaky as to where they won't come at you in the front. They won't come at you in the back. They'll come at you in a way where you least expect it. And it's a way that you will notice it, but won't think twice, is what I'm trying to say. And so like sometimes when I go to sleep, guys hide my discernment to know that. I can feel them 
trying to approach me as I sleep because that's how cowardly they are. They have to work in fear so they can't approach you in light. They have to approach you in darkness. And so, for example, they'll try to try to par- try to stop my breathing in my sleep. Yeah, they will. They've done it many times. Um, they've tried to <clears throat> stop me from talking because if I, if they know they they can close my mouth, they can't. That they think they can't get cast away because they know about they. There's one thing about you know demons. They very know you very well. They know you very well. That's why they're so sneaky. They know their opponent, but they don't. They can't face what's in you, which is God. So that's why they can only tempt your flesh. And so, what they'll do is they'll try to stop my mouth from moving, but God hears their thoughts. And I'll say to my head, and I'll flee. Um, God is very powerful. He hears everything. Um, that's just an example. Let's say I'm at work. There's one particular person who has a huge, I mean, oh my gosh, it aggravates me. A huge spirit of fear on him. And this spirit, God has shown me through my mom that it's, it, it's trying to put his fear on me. And I'm not scared of anything. God has taken that away. And um, he has a huge spirit of fear on him. And a lot of times, at first he tried to approach me with this fear. This man, he didn't know he has, he has a spirit on him. He doesn't. He's operating blind. Um, but let's say he would approach me in a way to cause fear. And it wouldn't work because I have the spirit of God in me. You know, a sound mind power, that's what God is. Um, And because of that, God showed me through my mom, my mom gets very supernatural things, that that fear has backfired on that spirit to where, what was it yesterday? My mom came to me and said um, that God wanted me to tell me something. I was like, okay. And she said that that demon that is of fear talks about you. I was like, what, he talks about me? She was like, yes, he calls you truth. I was like, why? And then she was like, he calls you truth under victory. And she said, then she said that God told her that even demons can't speak right. They can't speak truth right, but there's patches of truth in what they say. Everything they say isn't true. Of course not, because they're demonic. They're a rebellious spirit to God that can't speak truth because truth is God. But what she was saying was that this demon knows me very well. And God told her that even that demon speaks about him. Meaning that because of who we are in Christ, we are very powerful. And we don't, And I think that's the thing we don't understand is how powerful we really are in Christ, in the spirit. We may not see it in the flesh, we may not see it, but in the spirit, we are very powerful because of Christ Jesus. And our prayers are very powerful because of Christ Jesus. And she was saying that God was telling her that, you know, this, that evil spirit can't speak truth, but there is some truth in what that spirit said. What God then told her is the correct name that he should have is truth and victory, not truth under victory. So that, that I'm just giving you an example of how they are very aware of who you are, just, just in case you know, you don't know. So um, hmm, what else should I say? I'm just talking out of my head. I'm sorry, guys. You can skip around this video if you need to. <clears throat> what else? They will try to bombard you. See, demons are very weak. 
if you think about a demon's tactic, and I'm only speaking about this because I've gone through this for almost two years straight. Um, people who really know me know that I go through spiritual attacks daily, daily, constantly. And God just gave me a lot of awareness of their tactics. Like, like these are battle plans. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, they are very weak by themselves. They are. Demons are very weak by themselves. But in numbers, they have, they have somewhat power. But that's not the key. The key is persistence. They will persistently come at you. Um, like before this video, they didn't want to make this video. They were trying to <clears throat> distract me or try to try to restrain me from doing this. And it was persistence. It wasn't a, one attack. It was multiple at a time. And that's the only tactic. Because if you think about it, God has power. He holds all power. In his spirit, there is all power, but a demon doesn't have that. They have lack of power. So the only thing they can bring power in is if there's a lot of them. So because of that, they will bring on an onslaught, a floodgate will open. Um, <clears throat> and the best way to do that, to go against that, as far as praying, is to cut off the power. Not, not to Let's say, hmm. If you're giving if you're giving lustful thoughts, don't bind the lust. Bind the power that's using that lust. Basically what I mean by this is cut pray to defeat that power. Pray to defeat that demon's power. Ask for God to shut off that power being used against you, not the lust, but the power to produce that lust. Then it cuts off like a switch. God showed me this in a dream. I had a dream one time. <clears throat> Sorry, this video's getting long. Skip around if you want to. I was in my old school, high school, and I was sitting at one of my, it was my history, it was one of my history classes. And <clears throat> a demon came in, but he was shapeshifted. They shapeshift a lot of my dreams. I can tell now. now. And he shapeshifted to one of my old friends. And he had this water gun and he was just shooting it at me. He was sitting in front, he was like in a desk in front of me, just spraying his water gun at me. That's all he was doing. A little itty bitty water gun in the bottle. And he was spraying it at me at my chest right here and it was running down. <clears throat> and I was telling him to stop. I was telling him to stop and just leave me alone because it's really aggravating me. It wasn't hurting me. It wasn't destroying me. It was just aggravating. And it came to a point where I was like right in his face trying to tell him to stop. And he wouldn't. He just looked at me. And he said that, <clears throat> and I said, well, fine, I'll take, I'll, I'll stop you. He was like, and he got this prideful smirk on his face. And he was like, oh, you can't stop me. I'm the strongest whatever in the world. You can't stop me. I was like, fine. And so what I tried to do was I tried to apprehend his wrist right here. And I tried to squeeze that, but that didn't work. Somehow in the dream, my I wasn't strong enough to. And then I was like, okay. So what I did was the simplest thing. I opened his hand. That's all I did. I opened his hand and the what and he was defeated. <laughs> he was defeated. See, the what God showed me about that dream was that the water the water bottle isn't his power. The water isn't his power. It's his hand holding it. Like, of course, right? And what he showed me was that in order to make a demon stop coming at you so relentlessly is to stop his roar. You know, they, they, they are roaring lions seeking who they can devour. Stop his roar and shut his mouth. That's all you have to do. Break his claws. Every, his power is, is not in the objects he uses, but in the hand he used the object. It's what I'm trying to say. And once he showed me that, and I've, and I've been doing that a lot lately, it's helped out a lot through spiritual attacks. Um, you can get really creative with prayers. Don't, one thing that's about spiritual attacks, do not <laughs> limit God. Don't limit him to anything. 
as far as a spiritual attack because he is a creator. He can manifest anything, literally anything, I promise you. And some people who have spoken to me and witnessed this through prayer, you know, know this, that he can manifest anything into, into the spiritual realm, anything. Get creative. You have an imagination. Don't put your imagination in a box because you see a, a physical world. God created that as well. This is just pointers I'm giving people, I guess. This is what he wants to speak about, I guess. <clears throat> what else? Um, always rely on his strength. It's not in your power to do anything. Only the, the only power you should have is being obedient and surrendering. When the onslaughts come and they will come in waves, they will come in on, they will come in, in in chunks. It's never consistent, but it, they're chunks. The best way to get rid, of, the best way to focus is to have your mind ready for it. Let's say one thing, when you get blessed with something, you better prepare, you better be ready. If you get a blessing of a huge proportion, you better be ready quick for it to come. Because <laughs> of course Satan's gonna try to, think about any time in the Bible, in the book of Nehemiah, when they were building, um, they often build that wall. Satan used the people higher up to not feed the people or he had people <clears throat> come in and try to restrain them from doing it. Think about Jesus every time a blessing happened. Satan was trying to there with the Pharisees. It was, it's, it's a positive and negative each time. So always be prepared. Um, but also, it's backwards. When you're getting spiritually attacked heavily to the point where you don't know what's coming from and why, prepare for the blessing. Prepare for something great God's going to outpour on you. Cause it's gonna happen. Um, one thing I've learned is that Satan only operates when God is working on you for a greater cause. Satan won't operate on you if God's not working on you, because that means you're in Satan's domain. It's, it, there's no gray area. There's no gray area. It's either one or the other. So that's why one reason we should rejoice. Because if we're being spiritually attacked, like I know many of us are, it's going to be such a testimony. It's going to be such a refinement and growth and strength that we're going to find something that we've been all along. God sees the end result already. He sees us in our glorification now. And he knows how greatly he's made us. He wants us to get glimpses of that because he loves us that much. And he's so, he's so passionate of what he's made out of us. This is something he doesn't think twice about. This is something he puts so much of his time into us. Um, well, I, I don't know what to say. Um, sorry, I went on this, but you know, God told me he was gonna speak through me before I made the video. I didn't know how, I was just gonna talk. So, um, yeah, be blessed, guys. I'm praying for you. Please pray for me. Um, give us all encouragement. And I hope, you know, some of these um, little secrets he's giving me, little tactics, help you guys out as well. Um, be blessed.